thankful today. At this time, we're going to have our weekly announcements made by uh, Sister Juanita Quick. Amen. Let's receive her at this time with a great big hand clap. Someone invited you or you came on your own, please stand so we can see who is visiting with us today. Praise the Lord. We give you some love. Amen. Amen. We welcome you to the Great New Bible Way Church of God in Christ, located here on 22nd and Franklin Street, where the great pastor is Pastor Dennis J. Rogers. I schedule a worship virtual Sunday school each and every Sunday morning through a conference call at 9 a.m. Central Time and the phone number is 978-990-5000 and the code is 602-784-POUND. Sunday morning in-person worship service at 11 a.m. Central Time. Wednesday night prayer call at 8 p.m. Central Time and the phone number is 978-990-5000, and the code is 602-784-POUND. Friday, one hour of power and prayer in person at 11 a.m. Central Time. Join the Greater New Bible Way Mother's Board for virtual prayer every Tuesday at 6 a.m. Central Time, and Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time. This is coordinated by Mother Jessie Dandridge. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Our upcoming events, Arkansas Second Ecclesiastical Jurisdictional 71st Holy Congregation. That will be here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ, where Pastor Dennis Rogers is the host pastor. Bishop Frank Anderson Jr. is the prelate, and this will be Tuesday through Friday, July the 20th to the 23rd. And if you have more uh, questions or need contact, contact the Office of the Jurisdictional Executive Secretary at 501-712-0048. Please come early so because we are practicing the CDC protocol. Okay? All right. The Women's Department of the New Beginnings Ministry in Sherwood invites you to fellowship with, the, with them in their annual Women's Day service, which is Sunday, July the 25th at 2.30 p.m. And their speaker is our very own missionary, June Rogers Joseph. All right. Please, uh, and, and the praise team is asked to render a selection. All right. Their colors are white with a pink flower. And they're looking forward to a wonderful fellowship with the women of the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. All right? The Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ Community Outward, sponsored by the GNB Minister Wives and Delta Dillon. This will be August the 7th, 2021, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Join the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ virtually for any of these worship opportunities by means of social media. Facebook, Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ, Instagram, Greater New Bible Way Cogent, YouTube, Quick Church Services. Join us one, join us all, to God be the glory. Please govern yourselves accordingly to these IGB announcements and directives. God bless each and every one of you today. Amen, amen. If you heard the announcement from our own sister Quick today, amen, we're, amen. What we like to say, a busy season, amen, for the Lord on today. Amen. We're getting ready, amen, to enter into our 71st, amen, holy convocation, amen, all the churches of, amen, the state of Arkansas in the second jurisdiction are getting ready to come together right here at Greater New Bible Way, amen. So we've been busy, amen, preparing for the saints to come, amen, but I'm so glad, amen, God amen, has given us some help today, amen, that can stand at this desk, amen, and declare the word of God, amen. We have a man of God that is getting ready to come, amen, one of the sons of this great church, 
amen, of God in Christ, amen, one that has been by our side, amen, ever since we, amen, have been pastoring now, amen, so I thank God, amen, Elder Frederick Quick, amen, he is a great gospel preacher in his own right, amen, he loves God, he loves this church, amen, he loves the body of Christ at large, amen, and I want you to listen attentively today. Amen. To hear what the Lord will have to say unto us all. How many of you need a word today? I need a word. Amen. And that is a preacher today that can stand and declare God's word over this house and over your life and no matter where you are. Amen. If you would just listen to what God has to say. Amen. Would you repeat after me if I love? We show the world. We are his disciples. I commit, I commit my love. My love. Would you bow your ears briefly? <laughs> Father, I come once again before the throne of grace. Like that empty picture before a full fountain with no merit of my own. Lord, I lift my eyes to see your glory. I open my heart to receive your love. Lord, I engage my mind to understand your truth. Lord, I offer my songs to praise your name. Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart this morning be acceptable to you in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? amen. You may be seated. Give honor to God, Pastor Rogers, First Lady in our absence, First Lady Mary, Mother Rogers, my First Lady, Sister Quick, and all of God's people. It is always a pleasure to be in your presence. And when I look around and observe God's people so diligently in his services, it still makes me proud to know that all things work together for yes, good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. God is an awesome God. God is so often awesome that he has never seen a situation he couldn't solve. God has never saw a sinner that he couldn't save. God has never saw a substitute for a sinner. God has never saw a sinner that could save himself. God is awesome. Great is our God. I heard David say, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed that great to Deacon Allen on this morning. I usually listen to Sunday school because I'd be in the process of taking care of obligations and responsibilities, but I have him on. And as I listen to him talk about Abraham, you know, I realize that whenever God is doing something, he don't go around and talk to everybody. You know, he talked to Moses, he talked to Abraham, he talked to Elijah. But there were thousands of people on the earth. He talked to Noah. And Noah preached for a hundred years. God, you never read what God talked to anybody else but Noah. People read the story of Lot. But the reality is God did not save Lot from, from Solomon and Gomorrah because he cared about Lot. God saves Lot and his family from Solomon and Gomorrah because Abraham yes. had a relationship yes. with God. Yes. If you go to that chapter before you talk about Lot and Solomon and Gomorrah, yes. Abraham is pleading with God yes. to save yes. Solomon and Gomorrah yes. Yes. because his nephew yes. Lot was there. Yes. You never hear what God talked to Lot. Yes. God talked to Abraham. You know, a lot of people get up and, and, and we got people all over the country saying they heard, but they heard a voice from the Lord. God ain't talking to everybody. My, I told my wife, I need to teach a lesson called the voice. How do you know you hearing the voice of God? See, there are characteristics of the voice of God. If you don't even 
even know what the characteristics of God, how do you know when you're talking to God? Oh, bless his name. In the gospel according to St. John, St. Luke, the 10th chapter and the 30th, we read a familiar story. The story that we read is told from, by Jesus. It was prompted by a question asked by a lawyer. The question was, who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered that lawyer's question by telling the following story. Now I told Pastor when he called me, to call me Saturday, and I said, Pastor, my wife is going to have this dialogue with me. You just like your dad. <laughs> I said, Pastor, you know I got to hear this the rest of the evening. Pastor, I said, Pastor, I ain't going to preach nothing to them. <laughs> he said, he say, he say, she say. You know, yeah, it's just like his dad. He called you the day before you got to preach and say, I, I need you to. Bring the word. <laughs> I said, Pastor, you know I got to hear this the rest of the evening. <laughs> oh, bless his name. But God is a good God. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> In Luke, the 10th chapter, starting with the 30th verse, we read the story. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among Thieves which stripped him of his raiments and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Yes, yes. And by chance, a certain man came down, a certain priest representing the church that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Yes, yes. Likewise, a Levite representing the goodness of man. And when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. A certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him, and he bound up his wounds, poured on oil and wine, and set him on his beast and brought him to an inn mm -hmm. and took care of him. Yes. And on the morning when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spend more when I come again, I will repay thee. Usually when we preach from this text, we focus on the man that was wounded, or we focus on the good Samaritan who took care of him. But this morning, I want to focus on the thieves who wounded him, stripped him, and left him happy. The man was a traveler, and Jesus did not tell us very much or a great deal about this man. It's not unusual because everybody is traveling. There are two groups of travelers. There are those who are traveling, who know where they are going, and then there's the other group that are just traveling. I remember a song written years ago called Traveling Man. In the song, in the song it says, Traveling Man, Traveling Man, got no plan. Got no goal, just a traveling man. And so many of us are like that now. Got no goal, got no plan. Just traveling. But listen, if you don't aim for something, you won't hit nothing. Cradle to the grave only describes the length of the ride, not the objective of the life. One young man said that life was like a merry-go-round, and life for many people is like a merry-go-round. Only for 
for them, you have to drop the Mary. It's just a go round. Going around the same old scenes, having the same old bad experiences, the same old heartaches, the same old disappointments, the same old problems. No farther along at the end of the journey than they were when they started. No life for them is not a merry-go-round. It's just a go-round. But this man was not just traveling. He had a goal. He knew where he was going. He was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. Many people have objectives today. They have goals. And many of their goals and objectives are good. Their goals and objectives in and of themselves may not be evil. Well, education is a good goal. Intelligence is a good goal. Public place, status, wealth are all good goals. But may I suggest that any goal can be evil if you leave God out. Thus prompts the question, what is my reason for existence? Isaiah, the 43rd chapter in the 7th verse says, for I have created him a man for my glory. Yes. Revelations 4 and 11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Yes, sir. Have you brought God any pleasure? Have you tried to put a smile on the face of God? Have you brought God any pleasure? You were created for God's glory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Philippians 3 and 8 says, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. Yes, yes. Acts 17 and 28 says, In him we live and move and have our being. Yes, yes. Psalms 147, 4 and 5 says, He telleth the number of of the stars, he called them by name. Great yes. is our God. Yes. Have you gave God any glory? Yes. You were created for God's glory. Yes. And most of the times we think all about ourselves. On, the Bible says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, anything you ask shall be done. And people say, hey, why don't I have enough faith? Because if you listen to the things of the world, you can't have faith when everything that's coming out of the world is actually orchestrated by the devil. The Bible says if there's any good thing, think on that. And half of the stuff you hear is negative. I, I only listen to the news once a day because it ain't news. It's just bad news. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. James 1 and 14 said, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticement. Temptation is a thief. And will wound you, strip you, and leave you half dead. First girl. Corinthians 6 and 9 said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. First Corinthians 6 and 11 said, and Such were some of you, but you are washed, yes. but you are sanctified, yes. but you are justified in the name of the Lord yes. Jesus and by the Spirit yes. of our God. Yes. Thieves yes. that will wound you, yes. strip you, and leave you half dead. Yeah. Winning young people to Christ in this generation of technology and advancement 
has not been easy. They are travelers. And once a sense of illusion is felt, they are often such a reality. Young people today seem to take microscopic views of everything presented to them before acceptance. Many of our young people are concerned about Christian lifestyles and church problems. Yeah. Don't fool your how, yourself, the young people. They have a keen sense of imagination and they are quick to spot hypocrites yeah. and put on. Oh, bless his name. God used many young people throughout the Bible. Young people today must draw from God's abundance and power. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Faith Christians cannot draw. Amen. If God is in you, you should reflect and Amen. radiate him. Amen. Many young people think there's no way to know for sure that you're going to heaven. Yes. Only God can tell you that you're going to heaven and it is only two denominations in this country that I have read about that teach their followers to hope. But I want you to know that you are going to heaven. Yes, if your doors are unlocked, if you are traveling and your doors are unlocked, you have to be concerned. If you don't know where you're going when you die, your doors are locked for thieves to come in and strip you and wound you and leave you half dead. John, the third chapter in the 16th verse says, We shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. John 5 and 24 says, He that heareth my word and believeth hath, H-A-T-H, everlasting life. John 10, 28 says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. 1 John 5 and 13 says that ye may know that you have eternal life. The word have, H-A-B-E, is means to hold, to possess. The word have, H-A-T-H, is the present indicator of the word have. Have means to use, is used as an auxiliary word to form sentences expressing a complete action. That means you have eternal life. Yes. Jesus told in Romans, it says, if, it says, if thou would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that Jesus Christ raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And John tells you that this is, this is not a, a make believe, this is not uh, this is not a fiction. This is a reality. This is a truth. Satan accused Job of serving God because it paid him to do so. Satan argued, remove the profit motive, and Job's plenty would turn to blasphemy. And God allowed Satan to test his theory on Job and by taking away his health, his family, his wealth, everything. But his life. But let me put a footnote here. The devil had to get consent from God. <laughs> to mess with Job. Amen. And if you got to ask for my consent, you are not in charge. <laughs> Along came Job's friends. Yes, those holier than thou friends. So deep. Wrapped in the cloak of virtue, those oh, self-righteous friends, to console him. But soon their consolation turned to condemnation as they tried to get Job to confess of what hideous sins he had committed. Job's friends ever because they didn't have all the facts, and the facts that they had were grossly misinterpreted because of theological ideals about God. And suffering. Consequently, God rebuked Job's friends of misrepresenting him, him not to mention meddling Job. Now, most of the people bring up Job and they talk or they use it to justify us going through circumstances, but I want you to know that Job's circumstances, according to 
to scholars only lasted nine months, and Job lived 140 years after that. And God blessed him twice, when twice as much as he had in the beginning, and Job was rich to scholars. Oh, bless his name. It's time for us to realize that we are not blessed because of anything we've done so good or because we serve God so well. We are blessed because of Jesus in us and the hope of glory. If Christ be in you, you have the mind of Christ. That is why he said, greater is he that liveth in me than he that liveth in the world. Are you glad for Jesus? I said, are you glad for Jesus? If you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, Revelations, the third chapter, the 20th verse says, I stand, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. I will come in to him and will sit with him and he with me. John, 1 John 2 and 1 says, These things written I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. 1 John 1 and 8 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he will be faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a lie, and the word is not truth. Oh, bless his name. Galatians 6 and 3 said, For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Oh, bless his name. Why don't somebody lift their hands and tell God thank you? Hallelujah. Every once in a while, I remind you of that song, my father used to sing that says, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the feastal shores, very deeply stained within, seeking the rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me, saved am I. I don't know what you're going through, but whatever it is that you're going through, it's not a problem that God can solve. Maybe there's somebody out there today that has no fellowship with any other churches or God is speaking to you about a change, a shift in where you were. If you are searching a place of worship that you want a fellowship with, we're opening the doors of the church at this time. If you want to be part of this ministry, a part of a ministry that is working outside of the building, that are reaching the lives of the unsaved and the lives of the hurting and the lives of those that are in need of not only salvation, but they're in need of God's love. The doors of the church is open. You walk down that aisle now and just come to this altar. And we thank God for you. And I'm going to ask you to meet our pastor. This is Pastor Rogers. We met him out there before. Amen. God bless you, Brother Curtis. Brother Curtis said he brought his mother, his brother, and his friend. Amen. Come on, let's give him a hand. Come on, let's thank God for this brother. Thank God. Yes, you're right, Ella White. This church, this ministry shall resemble what heaven 
will be. I decree that and I declare that. I live that, I walk that, I talk that, I preach that, and I teach that. There are no barriers. For we all are God's children. Church where love flows because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services.